Oh, there's nothing I love like some thunderheads on those South Texas skies. There's nothing I love like the smell coming out of a portage on that's been baking in the sun in a hundred degree heat for the last month and a half. The smells coming out of that thing are divine. Oh, that's my that's my happy place. Oh, I just want to hold on to that smell, bring it with me, right? Just so I can share it with others. I want to share it with all of you. Oh, that's kind of tragic. So they're trying to protect Asclepius prostrata, you know, in the midst of building another lane for this highway, this mega highway. They're going to, not mega highway, but it's double lane highway now. And, uh, God, this was such a nice spot. I was here a year ago before this went in. And all the disturbance from creating the road and the gratings brought in a bunch of invasive grasses like buffalo. Or the disturbance has created a spot for the buffalo to get in. And so that prostrata, you can see the flags mark where it is. That rare milkweed, but it's all getting smothered. God, it sucks. So they had to put this up. But, I mean, no one's going in and removing the grass. So it's just getting smothered. This is a shade-intolerant species. So, yeah, this population's fucked. It's going to be sandwiched between two highways, which is actually kind of good for conservation purposes because it means they're never going to build a Dollar General here. But... Of course, Texas can do all kinds of stupid shit. I'd never say never in this state, but uh, yeah, I don't know. But it's just the, the grass thing is nuts though, man. Yeah, that's that milkweed is just smothered out. Look at the intense erosion that happened. This wasn't here a year ago either. So all the runoff just from getting this fucked up. Ah, it's sad. This was a great population of that milkweed and you can't even see it now. Yeah, they regraded this. This was a hill. They regraded all that. And then, you know, it just fucked up the drainage. And this is this milkweed is just buried, just smothered, just totally smothered beneath all this invasive grass. Is it even... I don't even... I can't even tell if it's there anymore. I don't see any signs of it. Okay, let's see what this looks like, this little paddock. Yeah, there it is. God, I've never seen a Sclepius prostrata look that color, though. Look, it's like lime green. I wonder if they sprayed herbicide. I wouldn't doubt it. Jesus. Uh. Yeah, look at that. Uh. Oh, that sucks. This was such a robust population. It's going to flower. But what is, yeah, what is this? I can't even, is this just buffalo or... It's like buffalo and Clayburg blue stem, both invasive grasses. Oh, those invasive grasses will be the death of so many plants here. They just they just smother the hell out of them. Oh, I didn't even see this. So those th those are all screwed, of course. They're smothered. Look at this guy, full flower, full frontal right here. The one that's not protected with the stupid paddock, which of course prevents people from mowing. So the mowing and the road grading are beneficial for this species because it doesn't like being shaded out by any of those fucking obnoxious invasive grasses. Oh wow, look, I've never seen that red color on the margins of those, uh, those hoods before. That's nice. That's a healthy, I wonder if this is the same one. Yeah, oh wow. But they did, they did really grade the hell out of this landscape though I mean this is you could see where they just this was a nice embankment and they just scraped it <laughs> it's kind of kind of ironic that the one that's doing the best I mean it makes sense to me the one that's doing the best is the one that isn't protected they should have definitely I mean it'd be nice to have like a stake here like a big you know piece of rebar that would mess up a mower if it got too close but uh you know with an orange flag on of course to warn them but the ones that the ones that are actually protect see the fence just prevents mowing so it prevents removal of the grass which means that the plants get smothered because they only get three inches tall i've never seen that red color along the uh on the hoods before that's really bizarre i wonder if that's a reaction to, like was there an, some chemical spray an herbicide spray is it just stress i mean this plant doesn't look too stressed otherwise normally you'd see you know, stress pigments on the leaves, not the flowers. That's bizarre. I don't know. Look at that juicy stigmatic slit. See that? Crazy to think a bee or a wasp has to stick its little leg inside that stigmatic slit in between those two hoods. And look at how those petals reflect down so gracefully. 
Probably a massive tuber. Ah, oh, God, it's just, <laughs> it's, I just hope I don't come back and, I feel like every time I visit spots that I love botanically in Texas, they always look worse, you know? Like six months down the line, it always looks worse. It's like working for the railroad, you know? That guy I used to work with out of the Roseville Terminal. Every, every time you see him, every six months later, he always looks worse, you know? Just more haggard, overweight, alcoholic, whatever, you know? It's kind of what Texas is doing to its landscape. Kind of what America is doing to its landscape. Nice rhabdotus shell. Nice uh, prostrata coming out from the, the mud. There's probably quite a few tubers in this mud. What the fuck? Why, what the fuck are they doing? I guess this, when they graded this, they had to push all this stuff aside. There's that cool antenna. See, it's worth taking these up. See, these erythrostemin. I collected an herbarium voucher, but... See, they grated the shit out of it, but the root is so deep that they just come right back. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty wonderful trait in the plant. There you go, there's Cremaria ramosissima with those orchid-like flowers and those petals that have been morphed in the oil-producing glands. See those bottom two petals? Looks like two little, uh, two little bags. You know, just above those sepals right there. Two little bags, those are the oil producing. Two of the petals have been turned into those oil producing glands. Those three top petals are still little flags, little attractants. You get the stamens in there. And then we collected some seed. This is a hemiparasite. And it's got Cremaria, all oh, has really, it's in its own family, Cremaria AC, the order of Creosote zygophilase, zygophilales, excuse me. And there's those fruits. See, they got like little, little Velcro. And all the Cremaria species will look like that. There's Cremaria in Chile, there's a shrub-like Cremaria in Nuevo Leon, there's a Cremaria, there's another species in Texas, Lanceolata, you get, I think there's another species after that, and then there's all over the Mojave Desert too. There's a lot of cool, lot of cool Cremarias out there, a lot of cool stuff going on. Oh, there's a system moving in. It's gonna start raining soon. God, I love that. The moments before a storm, there's more prostrata coming out the ground. This thing could do so well in cultivation. You know, if there was someone around to keep the uh, competition at bay, keep the area clear, water it. You give them water. Oh, here's some nice. Oh, yeah, these are going off. Oh, that's, that's really nice. That's nice to see. It's just getting it into cultivation. It took, I mean, just recently they finally got some at the San Antonio Botanic Garden. But, and hopefully they get, you know, start producing more seed. I got a friend who's in South Carolina who's growing it. But, uh, you get it going, you get more seed, get it out there. Don't have to, I mean, it still sucks that the habitat's not being protected, but at least the species isn't going to go extinct. Look at a museum. I see you over there. Fucking cool thorn scrub cicadas. Look at that a big old black brush. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at those juicy red fruits in that Opuntia. Ingomani or Lindheimeri or Alta or whatever the shit they're calling it. Who cares? It's an Opuntia. The fruits are actually kind of good once you peel them. You know, I've had them when they're not in season, when it's not warm, and uh, and but they're red and they're not as good. But now they're actually sweet. It's I guess the heat has allowed that sugar to be converted. Oh, converted to a sweet form. That's nice. Oh, it's got kind of like a, it's sweet, but then it's got kind of like a cucumber taste to it too. This cicada is still just going up. Mmm. One of my favorite species, Ancestrocactus shirii. Look at that, like a pear shape to it. Beautiful network of radial spines, tubercles, not ribs, and a hook at the end of that central spine. Do you see him? Do you see him? Little star cactus, little sand dollar cactus that's hiding amongst the varilla. Ah, oh, that is nice to see. I've been visiting this individual for two years now. And he's grown significantly larger. This species does grow 
somewhat fast. You can get them the grapefruit size in three or four years. They need a lot of moisture, though, and they don't have that big taproot like peyote does. Oh, I love you. It's so nice to see you again. Mwah. A nice salt, salt chunk or gypsum. It's like salty gypsum. Uh, anyway, look, ancestral cactus just blows my mind. First off, this is that small mesquite. Now it's in the genus, uh, how is it, strombocarpa or maltuma? It's the dwarf mesquite. Really cool flower, but look at that. There's a, where a, the old ancestral died, but it's got that tuberous root in the ground, so it's kind of like an herbaceous perennial, and it just re-sprouted three, one through three heads. What a fucking great species. It's a, it's a crime that this isn't grown out more. How are people, even like cactus nurseries around here, they don't want to grow the natives. They just want the fucking, the goofy shit from 5,000, well, 500 miles away. This is, the stuff we got here in South Texas is so fucking unique and cool. Look at, he's such a, he's a special man. He's very special. Or she. They them. God, they're fucking great. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful specimen. Beautiful day for a tarantula to be crossing the road. Oh, this is fantastic. I just, I see a new profile. I see a new profile pic. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's it. Wow, that's great. They will bite if startled, but it'll be very gentle. Just a gentle little nip. Yeah, I'm taking some rhabdotus, you know, to grow them as pets in my yard. See, you never see live ones. These are live. But it's funny because they hang out on the uh, Tassa Hill. They're not hanging out on Hatrofa over there. They only hang out on Tassa Hill because they know nobody's going to want it. No one's going to get them off Tassa Hill. Oh, that's cute. Look, they got babies with them. See? Where'd they go? They're over there. The babies look like they got a mohawk. Baby chachalacas. See that? Mischievous little birds, I love them. Now, I just want to say, sir, it's an honor to have you, okay? I know you're a, one of the smaller species of cicada, but uh, but still, it's an honor to have you here, and I'm very pleased that you showed up. Thank you. Look at that. That's all that ash. That's that uh, Catahoula Formation volcanic ash. Oh, this is nice. Look at that plump Poselgrai. Look at that thing. The mam looks like it's getting hit by some sort of mite. Oh! Juicy bastard. You can see the tuber in the ground that it's coming out from. What a great species. This needs to be in cultivation more. Just propagate the shit out of it. Oh my god, there's a bunch. Look, there's a, another one up there. There's a shit ton. It's such a great little cactus. And there was, there'd probably be peyote here, but it's we're kind of close to a road, so I'm sure it's been poached. Look at all that weird, look at all that cool uh, algae on the ground, too. That weird cyanobacterial. God, look, holy fuck. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that Poselgari. God, just a thicket. It's a forest of Poselgari. Behind it, too. Oh my God. Look at the guy, there's fucking Poselgari everywhere. I almost broke that guy. Thank God I didn't. Bunch of Hamato cactus. Manfreda, Silari. Look at how broad those uh those leaves are. Just tons of Hamato cactus. Little Hamato cactus forest. There's more Manfreda Silari. Basically an herbaceous perennial agave. Little uh Hamato cactus forest. Set his spinous or bicolor, whatever the f they call it. This kid I don't like to mention. It's a nice little bicolor. Little shit. It needs to get slapped. I don't say that about many people, except politicians and CEOs, but this kid definitely needs to get slapped. Look at that nice liverwort. That's that weird rickia species that has, I don't think it's even been described yet. Again, the cicadas, they're so sweet. You know what's no what's notable about black brush is that the seeds dangle out by that funiculus. 
which is kind of like the umbilical cord of the plant. Like they always just dangle out of those legumes once the legumes split open. And you can see there's a bunch. See, well, see how they just the seeds are dangling out, but there's a bunch of seedlings germinating right here on the sand, that Jackson Group sand. That's the stratigraphic formation. What do you think of that, you dildo? Huh? So that's a, that's a good way to that's another way to germinate stuff in a in a yard. Just get an area of, of barren soil, scrape it of all the grass and whatever shit. Right before a nice rain. Sow some seed. You know it's gonna be raining for a while and just and you can just pluck the seedlings out, you know, before their roots are, are so big that you'll be disturbing the roots if you pluck them out. See, oh, look at it. Oh, that's nice. You see, so we're taking it upon ourselves, being that they're growing in a road, we're going to take a couple because they're not going to be able to continue growing here. They'll get plowed. So we're taking a bunch of these blackberry seedlings. And while we've been here, I've been smelling this kind of sulfur smell that you sometimes smell on legume roots or sprouted beans. It's like a sulfury... You can see how it could turn into a fart easily, you know, like if you like beans in the digestive tract, it's some sort of phytochemistry that a lot of legumes uh, produce. And uh, I realized smelling this bag, it's it's the black brush seedling. So I don't know if that's a defensive phytochemical that they emit when they're seedlings to prevent things from eating them. But man, there is a lot of fucking black brush down here. It's crazy, man. It's everywhere. Oh, this is the time to come out here. Look at this. I love this fucking plant. Erythrostemin caudatum, formerly Sacelpinia caudatum. Doesn't get taller than two feet. Grows on the sand. Look at that glandular flower. Ah! Oh, and look at those. Da you got danglers. You got, look at those dangling anthers. wonder what is the primary pollinator for this. Probably some kind of bumblebee. You got filaments. You got hairs on the stamens glands all up and down to shit look at it look at those glands ants aren't coming at me yet that's a fucking great plant too doesn't need sand i got a couple growing in my yard but it's finicky they're definitely finicky they they like this sandy sandy loam and then here is uh, asclepius prostrata just waking up just emerging from that perennial root you can see the opposite leaves with that margin, that kind of red margin. I'd know that plant anywhere. There's a huge population here, but it's dormant. Just, you know, just, just in the ground in these little nut-like uh, tubers. This is a plant that definitely needs to get into cultivation more. Asclepius prostrata, this rare milkweed that does fine in cultivation as long as, you know, as long, because it doesn't get too tall. You got to prevent competition from invasives like buffalo grass and other plants and make sure it gets enough sun water it you could see how this it's it's not just sand it's like a sandy loam see that it's like a mud so it holds water pretty well which so the sleepies needs water too but uh i love these plants man i love this whole plant community fuck so much cool stuff here. Any more prostrata waking up, or is that the first? Look at the bean-like uh, fruits on that erythrostem and caudatum. See? Twisted bean. When they dry and dehiss and that tissue contracts, it twirls like that. And probably it's got like an explosive dehiscence thing, like it shoots seed as well. I don't see any other prostrata waking up. Oh, you can hear the thunder rumbling in the distance. Such a nice time to be out. Uh, all these gravels transported by an ancient Rio Grande. Oh, that's the other cool thing about that erythrostemin is those those fruits. Look at that, covered in glands, and they got a little, uh, little you know, a little bit of stripey stuff going on. Nice color palette. Got like a like a fuchsia, a magenta, and that that uh, lime green. Do your bathroom in those colors. Do a shower in those colors. And you got those dark glaucous leaves. You know, I'm no interior decorator, but if I was, I'd design, uh, I'd, you know, I'd do your bathroom up nice like uh, erythrostem and caudatum colors. Huh? You fancy fuck. Oh, it smells so good. It's really pissing now. Silas Trophy Nephaloides. Because it looks like a Nephalium. 
when it's in bud. Yeah, I'll buy that. Make a voucher out of this in a session somewhere. Alright, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.